What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car track SUV reviews on YouTube, and today we are in the brand new 2024 Acura Integra, courtesy of Bobby Ray Hall Acura in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because it definitely has a legendary name. I love the Integra name. My first car was an RSX, which was the DC5 Integra. So this one is definitely special for me. I did enjoy reviewing it last year, but I got a different trim level this year. So I'm really excited to be reviewing the A-Spec without the technology package this year. Not only that, I just realized that Acura gives you a six year, 70,000 mile powertrain warranty. That's really good. That's better than Honda gives you. So I didn't realize that. So that's pretty darn cool. And you do also get two years or 24,000 miles of complimentary maintenance with all new Acuras as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 Integra. First one being the base, starting at $31,500, which by the way, is a modest $200 price bump from the 2023 model year. A-Spec being the one we have today, starting at $33,500. And lastly, A-Spec with tech, starting at $36,500. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Integra is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 1.5 liter turbocharged four-cell if that sounds familiar, yes, that is the exact same engine as the Honda Civic Si, putting out 200 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 192 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1,800 RPM, that power being sent to the front wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters, which we will be testing out here in a little bit, 0 to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.1 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 29, the city 36 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our Tegra, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. There is a kind of toggle switch located just to the left of the shifter that will give you different drive modes like comfort, normal, sport, and individual. The individual driving mode, by the way, that only comes with the A-Spec with technology, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity as well. So now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first. And let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, we got her straight away. I'm gonna put it in first gear here in three, two, one, go. Yeah. All right, paddle shifters are dang quick. <laughs> a lot quicker than I expected them to be. But keep keep in mind, this is a CVT, so technically you're not actually shifting through any gears. But still, having said that, the paddle shifters are dang quick. So if you wanted to have a little bit of fun with them, you can do it in the Integra because they are quite fun. But anyways, let's go ahead and find one more straightaway. Let me give back full control to the Integra here and let's go ahead and test out that acceleration and uh, let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, you guys, we are in sport driving mode in three, two, one, go from a standstill. Dang, once you get higher up in the RPMs, this thing goes, son. Teensy bit of turbo lag at lower RPMs. But like I said, as you get higher up in that RPM band, this thing really gets going. So yeah, that was plenty of an acceleration for the Integra without a doubt. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.3 inch ventilated front disc. In the back, 11.1 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, as we just came up to a stop sign there, that comes in at 119 feet. Braking feel is perfectly fine. Leans a little bit more on the firmer side of things, which I personally prefer, but braking is perfectly fine in this thing. But then touching on suspension and handling up front, you will get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. And if you were to go with that A-spec with technology trim level, you will also get an adaptive damping suspension. And so what that is, it essentially monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the rotor perfections, giving you a smoother ride, but also tightening up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling as well so it really gives you the best of both worlds if you wanted the best handling if you wanted the best ride quality a spec with technology is the trim level that you want to go with and having driven that one this year and now having driving one without that a spec with technology this year 
I can tell you it is a night and day difference. In terms of ride quality at least, without that adaptive damping suspension, you do tend to feel a decent amount of the road. It kind of feels like the Honda Civic I literally just got done driving earlier today. That is the ride quality that you can expect without that adaptive damping suspension. Now, having said that, it's not a horrible thing. It just rides like a compact car. I'll put it that way. Whereas if you get the A-Spec with technology, it rides more like a luxury car, like you would expect from an Acura or something like that. So I will say that for me personally, I go with the A-Spec with technology for that ride quality alone. And there's some other reasons to do that as well. We'll get more to them as we go along in the video. But anyways, then touching on steering sensitivity and steering feel, I will say it is a noticeable difference depending upon the drive mode that you put it in. I just put it back in sport driving mode. It is weighted beautifully. This is one of the best steering feels I've driven in quite a while very heavy weight to the steering so it instantly points you in the direction that you want to go tons of driver feedback with the steering i absolutely love it and i gotta be honest the integra has always been known for an incredible handling car and it feels like that still to this day in this modern day integra as well just like in my rsx back in the day just like in the dc2 back in the day it's always been a brilliant handling car and it still is so i absolutely love the steering feel and the handling in this thing then touching on cabin noise we're going 36 miles per hour right now you do get a little bit of road noise but the wind noise is pretty much held at bay so i like that so for me personally i don't have any issues with the cabin noise then touching on rear visibility it's decent it's perfectly fine it's definitely something that you get used to i wouldn't have any issues personally in terms of rear visibility there do want to also mention though with that a spec with technology you will get rain sensing windshield wipers so essentially when the integra detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you so it's kind of like automatic headlights just one less thing you got to worry about there also with the A-Spec with technology, you're going to get a head-up display projecting your speed, speed limit, and safety information up onto your windshield, assisting with forward visibility there as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Acura Integra. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Acura Integra finished in Apex Blue Pearl, in case you were curious of this exterior color name that we have here. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Integra is made, taking a look at the VIN. First character is the number one, indicating that the new Integra is built and assembled here in the US, specifically Ohio. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Of course, you have that Integra stamped into the front bumper. I absolutely love that. Just below the driver's side head light there and that is of course a throwback to uh the dc2 integra days back in uh i think late 90s early 2000s is when they were having that so absolutely amazing i love that look jewel eye led headlights though do come standard so crazy amounts of illumination at night because of those led daytime running lights of course as well automatic feature and automatic high beams so when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beams for you there so very convenient led fog lights then coming with the a spec trim level so you guys can see those down below as well got some front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combinations of course and if you're curious about the ground clearance it actually comes in at 5.1 inches then but Overall, I do like the look of the front end, especially that Integra kind of etched into the front bumper. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of this one, gloss black window surrounds do come standard. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors also coming standard, and they will actually be heated for all trim levels across the board as well. LED integrated turn signals coming with the A-Spec with technology. Also the reverse gear tilt down feature coming with the A-Spec with technology then as well. And of course, if you go with one of those a-spec trims you're going to find that a-spec badging found on the front fenders and then taking a look down at the wheel setup 17 inch silver alloys for the base trim level however all other trims being the a-spec trim levels are going to get what you are currently looking at which is 18 inch shark gray double five spoke alloys which definitely look good on this one but let's now go ahead and make our way to the back which is my personal favorite part on the integra all right so but now since we are around to the back of this one body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top got that center high mount stop lamp as well on the upper portion of that rear glass there also rear spoiler gloss black rear spoiler i should say coming with the a spectrum levels in case you were curious how to go ahead and get that once again though you got the integra stamped into the rear bumper there just below 
below the uh, rear tail light there that definitely looks good I love that LED tail lights do come standard you got the a spec badging as well and just below it all you will find dual exhaust outlets with satin chrome tips so having said that I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the Integra, when it comes to opening that rear hatch, there is a button to unlock it on the key fob, but it is a manual hatch. There is a rubberized button found right in the middle, just like my old DC5 Integra back in the day, just like my old RSX. So I love that. It's another throwback, which is definitely a good idea by Acura because it brings back those memories. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 24.3 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it there are some tie down anchors back there there of course is some cargo lighting there's a little bit of netted storage found on the kind of the driver's side in the back there that's definitely very nice and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will find some in-floor storage as well as a tire inflator kit as opposed to the spare tire i would have preferred the spare tire personally but it's a tire inflator kit but then making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 37.4 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there there is actually no rear center armrest with cup holders surprisingly but dual rear usb charging ports coming with the a spec with technology package and no rear ventilation there actually as well which to be honest is kind of interesting but then make your way up to the front seats eight-way power driver seat coming standard heated front seats coming standard leatherette seating coming standard but a spec with technology is going to add a micro suede leather combination for the seats I remember that last year they were super comfortable memory settings for up to two different drivers it also adds a 12-way power adjustable driver seat four-way power adjustable passenger seat so that is definitely the best seating setup without a doubt I remember that but having said that these seats aren't that bad honestly they're plenty comfortable for me so I personally didn't have any issues but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is going to be leather wrap that does come standard for all trims you can get a heated steering wheel that adds $475 if you were interested and I did like the a spec badging found on the bottom portion of that steering wheel if you were to go with the a spec trim so definitely a big fan of that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your Acura logo on the one side then when you flip it over you got lock unlock and that button to pop the rear hatch of course but it is a remote start with the a spec with technology trim level only but all trims are going to be a keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here simply put my foot in the brake and press that silver engine start button located kind of just by the driver's right knee and so once started up 10.2 inch digital gauge cluster will come standard got your tachometer on your left speedometers on your right digital speedometer front and center and of course you can control what is on there by using some steering wheel mounted controls but i do also like how if you change the drive mode it's going to adjust the colors a little bit so if you put it in that sport driving mode you got some more red hues if you put it in comfort you got blue and it looks like normal is going to give you some gray hues there so that is pretty cool that it adjusted a little bit but then making our way to overall interior quality power moonroof is going to come standard for all trim levels across the board i like that just like my rsx overhead sunglass holder coming standard dual zone climate control for the a spec with technology led interior lighting is going to come standard with all trim levels actually along with an auto dimming frameless rear view mirror also for all trim levels led door accent lighting for the a spec with technology and you can get a wireless phone charger that goes for 300 dollars if you wanted to go that route but just in front of the shifter you got a little bit of rubberized storage usb charging port 12 volt power outlet to the left of the shifter you got an electric mechanical parking brake behind the shifter you got dual cup holders and within the center armrest there's a little bit of storage there it's not too bad but overall it does look a lot like the Civic it's a little bit different you still got the kind of the the honeycomb kind of uh, climate control vents up here but it doesn't go all the way across like the Civic you do have a better quality than the Civic I will say that on the doors and things like that a lot more soft touch materials which definitely a big fan of but I like the gloss black surround surrounding the shifter as well it's going to be easy to clean I've had that in my cars before but overall interior quality is perfectly fine for me I don't have any issues with that but then taking a look at the infotainment screen a seven inch color touch screen display is going to come with the base and the a specs that is currently what you guys are looking at 
but if you go with the a spec with technology you're going to get a nine inch color touch screen display but either way you get bluetooth and audio streaming either way you get android auto apple carplay but if you were to go with the a spec with technology you will get wireless android auto apple carplay with a nine inch screen so that's pretty cool of course you could check out your driving statistics up there if you wanted to got that classic honda slash acura clock up there as well and of course you could check out your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems you will find eight speakers with the bass and a spec trims but then a 16 speaker els studio sound system with the a spec with technology I do remember testing that last year. The reason being is because that is my favorite sound system to date of the past 800 cars that I have tested. That is an amazing sound system. So if you like music, go with that one. But having said that, I haven't tested out the eight speaker sound system yet. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out our eight speaker sound system that we have with us here today. I can't keep my eyes off of you. All right, so in terms of that eight speaker sound system, it's got a little bit of bass to it, but the clarity was definitely not there. So it is a night and day difference between the A-Spec with technology and just the A-Spec in terms of the sound system. Like the A-Spec with technology, that puts you in a completely different world when it comes to the sound system. But this one, not the best. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Integra in reverse, you will find a rear view camera with a few different angles, just like the Civic, letting you know what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the Integra is an IIHS top safety pick plus, which pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anxious tethers for children, rear child door locks, but also rear side impact airbags a lot of times that's going to be an option where you have to pay extra for in luxury brands but integra actually gives them to you for uh for free i like that but also coming standard acura watch advanced safety and that's for all trim levels again so collision mitigation braking system with pedestrian detection adaptive cruise control lane keep assist road departure mitigation traffic jam assist traffic sign recognition forward collision warning lane departure warning any blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert all that stuff comes standard for all trims definitely very nice and then if you were to go with the A-Spec with technology, you're also going to get front and rear parking sensors to go along with all of that. So when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Integra, I will say it has the best sound system available out there right now with the A-Spec with technology. Otherwise, it really isn't that great, but I love that sound system. So I got to give it credit for that. Wonderful steering feel as well. It's a very heavy steering feel. I will say that six speed manual being available. That is wonderful as well. Also, I want you guys to really know this, the, the ride quality does differ substantially depending upon the trim level that you go with. It is such a nice ride in the A-Spec with technology. It is not the best ride in the A-Spec that we have today. So definitely know that if you're into ride quality, but I think really the question remains for you guys. I'll put it in the comment section below. Do you get this or do you get the Civic Si or do you wait for the Integra Type S if you can even find one? I think it's a better question. But anyways, let me know what you think of the Integra in the comment section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and I will see you guys all in the next video, stay gold.